Quick, name one thing you can't live without. Time's up. What's your answer? Coffee? Your cell phone? Email? No, no one ever says email. Let's get a bit more basic. Food, water, shelter. No matter what your answer, chances are electricity plays a big part in providing it. It's called the 42, a small solar powered generator with big plans. Its developers saw a need, developed a solution, and launched their business all from right here in South Dakota. My guest today is Chris Maxwell, president of Peppermint Energy. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet. First of all, Peppermint Energy, that's a very interesting name. How did yeah. you come up with that name? Yeah, you know, so um, the name really came from, uh, and, and you know, it's always when you name things, um, first of all, uh, the, the guys that are part of Peppermint Energy always wanted to um, name it something you wouldn't expect. So something that kind of catches people or they say, oh, what's that? Who, who's peppermint energy? Why, you know, well, how's energy connected to peppermint? Or, and so in doing that, um, we went through a process and we kind of generally get a group of people together and people that are kind of creative and fun. And, and what we came back to is what's the cleanest, freshest sounding word that you could come up with? Okay. And, and so, so through all of that, peppermint was, was what came out of it. And also, as I, as I said earlier, um, we didn't want it to sound like any other solar company that was out there or any other renewable energy company. So it just having peppermint as that word was a, was a nice offset to that. Well, you did the job because uh, I'm sure a lot of people uh, pay attention and perk up when they hear the uh, name peppermint yeah, you, energy. You'd be amazed. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so let's just jump right in. The 42, yeah. what yeah. is it? We, we know it's connected to energy. Yeah, so, so peppermint energy provides renewable energy solutions for off-grid um, scenarios around the world. So places where people don't have access to grid power, reliable mm -hmm. grid power. Um, so that's what we do as an organization and, and our flagship product is the 42, which are portable solar generators. So they're all in one um, solar solutions with batteries included. Um, they're as easy and simple to use as your, your regular wall plug in your house. Um, but it takes renewable energy, it takes solar energy and makes it extremely simple. So for many people that are looking to use solar power around the world, um, they need to buy the solar, buy the battery, uh, buy the inverter, buy all of the things. And then they have to have all the cabling and then they have to connect it and then they have to maintain and manage it. And what we've done is we've taken all of that, we've simplified it, we've put it in a nice easy case, something that has a nice handle that you can pick up and carry with you and really bring um, a really powerful, reliable power source to people in parts of the world where they don't have access to power today. Now that is absolutely fascinating and we've got a, a unit right here. Yeah. This yep. is it. Yep. Uh, this it is it. It's just very simple as you said. Yeah, and that really was the goal and, and uh, where, we, where we send these um, solar generators, which we have them in 30 plus countries around the world, um, where we send them, um, keeping it very simple, making it very easy to maintain. It's going into very remote locations. So, so not having a lot of moving parts not having a lot of things that are exposed to the elements, um, really keeping those very simple was really important in the process when we put this together. And just looking at it, it looks like it can just fold up, has built-in handles, and it's very mobile. Yes, it is. It is. You know, as we always say, um, it's a very portable, powerful um, power source for somebody. So, so it's very simple to use. You, you fold it up, you can pick it up, take it wherever you go. Um, what we often explain is you could have it, uh, take a mobile medical clinic. Um, you can have a, uh, um, power wherever you go, you throw it in the back of your truck and take it with you. And whether it's having a refrigerator plugged in as you're driving around, taking your, uh, um, taking your vaccinations with you, or just being able to plug into any of your small medical devices you might need, or, or having your, a reliable phone or a reliable um, uh, lab, and, and the portable piece of it is huge. So it is solar based. So yes. in order to use it, um, let's uh, talk about the scenario. This gets shipped over to some foreign country. Yep. 
and they're pulling it out, getting it ready to use. They open it up. It has to sit in the sun. Um, how, how does that work? Yeah, so um, so generally generally we have some charge in them when we, when we ship them. So depending on how long they sit in storage and how long the shipping takes and mm -hmm. all of those pieces. We generally tell people, set it out in the sun. You know, give it a little bit of time just to uh, charge up the battery a little bit because you're going to be using devices which are going to have an immediate draw on it. Um, in some ways, depending on how small the device is, you could plug in, plug your cell phone in immediately and start drawing power out of the system. But you, people are generally plugging in larger devices and, mm -hmm. and different things. So we put it out for a couple hours, um, get a nice charge in it, get it in direct sun. Um, mm -hmm. So make sure that there's no shadows and, and it's, in, it's in a good location for that. Um, and then you can go ahead and start, start using it. So I mean, that's, that's the beauty of it is it, it relies on that, um, the sun power source that is there every day for these people already. And most of these parts of the world we're sending it to, there's no shortage of sun. So the part that's facing us right now, that is the part that actually uh, the sun hits and then yep. it does yep. its work? Yeah, so this is, these are, these are, we have two, uh, um, two solar panels here and that's 80 to 90 watts of solar in, uh, in each of these panels. So it's about 160 to 180 watts. Of, uh, of solar. So when this is, uh, so this is then producing about two kilowatts of power a day. So for our basic consumption here in the United States and, and for home, that's not a ton of power. Um, you know, this will run on its own our, our kilowatt uh, sized uh, solution, our 42 Pro Plus will run, say your standard um, refrigerator that you'd have okay. in your house today. It'll run that for probably, you know, six hours or so. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a backup for that piece. When you talk about running devices in uh, um, other parts of the world, it's designed to, on its own, run a um, small dorm-sized refrigerator, a cube refrigerator, a um, handful of LED lights, a laptop, um, a fan, a couple other medical devices, all of those things. Uh, in fact, you could even run a, a LED TV and, and some of those pieces with that too. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, three. It's, it's a reliable single power source right. for somebody. Now, standard usage, you, know, you don't leave the TV on all night. You don't leave, yeah, <laughs> leave right. lights on during the day when you're not, uh, um, when you, when you're not using it. But that's, it's designed to be able to run those kind of things. So if you think okay. a, a single clinic in a remote location, um, that'll, it'll run all those devices you need to. Um, okay. you know, those, those kind of things. Mm -hmm. All right. And so let's talk about the storage of power. Um, you yes. know, you talked about putting it in the sun and then being able to use some things right away. Yes. Um, yep. but does it store power and for how long? Yeah. So it's got, uh, um, lithium ion batteries that we use in it. So that's part of keeping it portable. Um, very lightweight batteries, um, compared to, uh, many of the, who would be the, the, the similar type of battery products it's probably about a half to a third of the weight of what those batteries would be that are in this device. Um, so we have different battery sizes and that all depends on really either how big a device is you want to run at one time or how long you want to run things. So, and especially at night when the sun does go down, which is always going to be a natural constraint of, yeah. of solar powered solutions. Um, people want to have as much battery as they can mm -hmm. to run the things they want to after the sun goes down. And, Let's say for you know a family that wants a couple lights and wants their kids to be able to study at night, um, and then maybe have a uh, um, have a TV on for a little mm -hmm. bit or, or do a couple of those things or run a fan. Um, they're going to have a different different battery size need than a um, clinic that's going to be you know running different devices that have to have to go through the whole night mm -hmm. and that have to be powered. Or if somebody's running a refrigerator, they need enough power to have that run all the way through the night and then be able to, to kick on back in the morning when you have the solar power running again. So it's all just a balance and, and we also, um, our systems can be hubbed together. So you also can connect multiple units, which the, in that case, we start running larger clinics, um, okay. larger, uh, larger agriculture based kind of solutions, you know, various kinds of things where we hook, you know, 10 to 20 of them together in different ways and are, are running bigger things. So this is all fascinating. Um, you know, it's very unique. How did this start? Where did you come up with this idea? Yeah, you know, it really started with uh, our founder, uh, Brian Graham, who's the, the CEO of the company and who I've, I've worked with in the past and owned some companies with together. Um, uh, he, it really came from, um, we had owned a consulting firm 
before together and okay. we worked in the renewable energy space a little bit and, and had been on the fringes of kind of solar and, and some wind stuff and had done much more in the ethanol space. But just being in that world, we started to get engaged in a little bit, but we're lucky enough to kind of be on the outskirts of it because we it wasn't really our specific expertise originally. So we got to learn a lot of it and be in the midst of it, um, but not be so tied to all the ways that people have already done it. And so in doing that, when we sold our consulting firm and moved on to the next things, Brian started looking into what are some different ways that we could go about bringing um, renewable energy mm -hmm. solutions to the world. And in doing that and multiple pivots and iterations of, well, we should, should we do this or is this the right size or it, do, we, do we need this kind of battery or this much solar or how do we package it? Um, the result really ended up being the 42. And it ended up being something that was powerful enough and simple enough to run that small refrigeration. Um, to be able to bring a reliable power source to do that um, really was it ended up being that ultimate goal of the 42. All right, and so uh, it was evolved and your company has evolved, but where yeah. do you manufacture this? Yeah, so uh, currently today we manufacture everything here in South Dakota. So mm -hmm. we source components from different parts of the world as, as any manufacturing company would do, but we're headquartered in Sioux Falls and uh, we manufacture and make, make our, our units and systems here in, in South Dakota and, and, and are proud of it and really mm -hmm. uh, believe that you can do anything from here just like you can from anywhere else. And, uh, and so we, we will always, you know, Brian Graham and I are both from Parkston, um, South Dakota originally. So, yeah. so we, are, we are very much hometown, um, Homer kind of guys when it comes to uh, um, that kind of stuff. And we believe you can do, do it from here. Okay, so your partner is a buddy from your hometown. Yeah, his dad was actually our high school basketball coach. Okay. And he's a, he's a few years older than me. And, and, uh, and so we both had went off and I lived in Omaha for a while and then up in the Twin Cities and he had kind of done the same thing. And, and it just happened that we crossed paths again. And as I mentioned, we had a consulting firm together in the past and mm -hmm. then uh, um, Brian started doing this again and I, I joined him. So, And the unique thing as well, you said you are uh, the company's based in Sioux Falls, but you live in Pierre. Yeah, I do. My, or Fort Pierre, yeah, the my, area here. Yeah, yeah my wife, uh, um, I, I live over in Marion's Garden in, yeah. in Fort Pierre and my wife's from Pierre originally, uh -huh. uh, Molly Wise Graham and, and the in-laws are, are here as well and, and it's just you know, it's the uh, the beauty of technology, and um, really that, as I said, you can do anything from here, just like you can do anything from all over the world. You know, that that global economy. Um, you know, the the ability to have a laptop and a cell phone and Skype and and all of those communications and all those all those technology things make it possible for me to be living back close to family and still be starting and, and building a company that's sending product to 30 plus countries around the world. So it's just, it's very exciting. That's right, you can enjoy the, enjoy the quality of life that we have yeah. to offer here and all the amenities that we have that, uh, you know, those of us that live here, we live here for a reason. Yeah. yeah and uh, exactly. you can enjoy that, but yet, um, next week you're taking off and uh, going to other parts of the country and then uh, to another country in the world and yeah, exactly. you can do that all and come back home. Yeah, to, to live here and, and, and head out to DC for some, some, some work trip and then head down to, head down to Haiti um, for, for, uh, um, for a trip down there. It's just, uh, and then come back here and be back close to family and, mm -hmm. and be doing all those things. It's just, it's a blessing. Yeah, and, it's priceless. Uh, we, it is. We, we <laughs> just, we, it's perfect for us. Yeah. So starting up a company for anybody can be a challenge. Yeah. Um, talk about how you were able to secure the funding for a startup company like Peppermint Energy. Sure, sure. And so, so we, you know, there's all kinds of funding sources, whether it's from uh, equity investors to um, to you know founders, uh, startup capital, and putting our capital into it to actually producing revenue um, to get started. And and so we we had all of those things, and all mm -hmm. of those were were part of it. And uh, and so so we were lucky enough to have a good source of, in, in fact, the, the investment dollars that we, we raised were were um, primarily local and have still primarily stayed local. So that was something that we were very um, adamant about as well, is that we also felt that you could raise that money here to have those right partners here in South Dakota. So, so that's been a big part of our story too. Um, beyond that though, uh, a big part of, of us getting 
jump started or getting kicked off was being being a part of kickstarter.com and doing it doing a kickstarter project and and we raised some there were some dollars and they come in as donations it's not actually an investment in your company they're donating those for a reward um in supporting your project but we ended up uh, um you know raising 300 percent of our goal in that in that project and actually through that i think we ended up sending our products to you know 20 some different countries around the world and probably the biggest part of that is and and i'm certainly not lessening the money piece because as a startup you'll take that money wherever (laughs) wherever you can get it from but having that interaction with customers and that feedback and just that conversation that is so important when you're producing a product Mm -hmm. for for a customer and producing that and to have that feedback loop of we like this or have you thought about this or you hear it enough times and you say well we probably should include that <laughs> include that in the product or you hear it once and you're like it seems like a big deal but not many people are talking about it and being able to have that conversation that early in our development mm-hmm. as we were just getting manufacturing going and just getting pieces in the, the right place w- that was honestly priceless so right. when we talk about um, you know what we raised in capital and resources having that was just so important as we got started. All right, so you mentioned Kickstarter, yeah. and for those that don't know what that is, talk about that a little bit and how you used it. Sure, and it falls into the in a, you know the crowdfunding kind yeah. of conversation or crowdsourcing, and, and you know and that 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 can that can hit many realms of of how people can use that, and it's utilizing the internet and utilizing social networks to raise capital, and whether it's from um, uh, GoFundMe.com would be another example. There, there, there's all kinds of Indiegogo, those, those kind of kind of um, uh, websites. We use Kickstarter.com because it was really focused on bringing out new and innovative, creative ideas, and and that's why we we chose it. And it's it's a it's an online community. Um, it's it's uh, it's a place for people to put out creative ideas, new ideas. Um, there's a lot of arts and, and, and music related things that are mm-hmm. that are on the site. Um, a lot of new consumer products, just various different kind of things. Um, but you basically present your idea. You put a little video together. You have a goal. You have rewards that you uh, um, that you share with share with people. We have a smaller version of this that has about 10 watts of solar that we gave away as a reward oh, okay. if somebody put put uh, um, so much in. We actually okay. sent about a hundred, a little over a hundred or so of these units to as rewards to people who put enough okay. enough, uh, um, enough of a donation mm-hmm. into the, uh, um, into our Kickstarter oh. project. And, and it just was a, it was a great way to get some, you know, basically initial revenue, initial sales, some initial feedback. Um, and for someone who's trying to kickstart a creative idea, mm-hmm. it gave us little dollars to put towards manufacturing and towards some of our initial tooling costs and some of those things. So it just was, it was, uh, it was really priceless for us at the time. Yeah. All right. So I can tell just by talking to you and, and the viewers can tell this as well, that your mind is always a whirling. Sure. And so I'll bet for you, starting a company from the ground up yeah. has been very energizing. Yeah, it, it is energizing. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's why people do these kind of things is that it is you get to be a part of everything whether it's you know the manufacturing or the sales or the the R&D and the and the new ideas or your website and your marketing and branding it's all of those those things that you get to be a part of and and uh, it can be overwhelming at times i mean mm-hmm. it, that that's part of the experience too is that you're really trying to wear every and, and all hats and you're doing it in an environment where you're a new company with new culture and new relationships and, and just trying to build all of those things at once. And, and that is energizing and that's, that's, why, that's why I do it and that's why we, we started the company. And, and uh, you know, of course, you don't want to stay in that spot too long. It's fun to be the startup, but mm-hmm. you're, really, you're doing this because you want to build and grow out of it. Yeah. And, and we're really on the verge of that uh, getting to that next level of things for us too which is exciting yeah and so you're located in sioux falls how many employees do you have at this point yeah so we've got a and we will always you know from the the startup perspective you know staying very lean and and nimble is is going to always be important to us so we have only a handful of full-time employees Uh now at the same time we have a, a a large network of sales partners and sales reps and and distributors that we use around mm-hmm. the world. So we have individuals 
in many places across the world that are that are selling and, and partnering with us. Um, we've got the manufacturing group that we we outsource our manufacturing to, so they have okay. a team of engineers and and, uh, and and manufacturing production people that are you know allocated toward, towards our work. Um, we then use um, some outsourced partners for part of our kind of R and D and design and some some technical engineering expertise. What we often share is that. So the first versions of, of this 42, we probably had 75 to 100 different engineers that looked at it through the process. We never hired those people full time. Mm -hmm. We just used them from various different consulting partners or different groups um, as we needed them. And for us, it allows as a startup you know, to try to hire that one perfect person who will know all the things about the industrial design and the electrical design and the solar and battery pieces of it, and then you know, man, you know designing for manufacturing. Um, to be able to try to hire that one person is extremely difficult. Right. To be able to outsource it and bring in those various pieces of expertise as you need them um, is priceless as well. Mm -hmm. so, so that's really, our model is to keep a small lean team we obviously have to build and grow and have people who can manage those outside resources, um, but to keep that team really lean and and then um, and then bring in those right pieces when we need them. All right. Now I know you have a connection to Rotary clubs yes. and to the local Pier and Fort Pier Rotary as yes. well as maybe Rotary clubs in other countries. So what's the connection? Yeah. Well, so so I am a Rotarian. Um, I actually became a Rotarian though through getting introduced to Rotary here in uh, in in the Pier Fort Pier. Club. I'd known of Rotary and had attended some meetings in the past just with other Rotarians, just kind of checking it out. Um, but for me, as someone who travels quite a bit and, and lives in a community but is also not there that much um, for work-wise, I really was looking for a place to, uh, um, to really have that connection to community, but also somebody who, or a group that um, had the international um, uh, uh, focus and mission mm -hmm. that fit with the work that I was doing as well. And so Rotary um, uh, had, had approached me about coming in and speaking about what we were doing with Peppermint Energy and the 42. And so I came in and spoke to them and it just was kind of right timing, right place. I was looking for a service group to, to be a part of and really connect me into the community more here as well. So I joined Rotary from there. And then the locally Rotary Cub has been um, extremely generous and has actually hopped on board full force on um, putting together some international projects and really having a focus on getting the 42s and getting getting uh, reliable energy out into different parts of the world um, through partnering with Peppermint Energy. So they've supported sending units to uh, um, to Haiti, which we're actually we're going back there for another Rotary Club has supported sending another unit down to Haiti, but our local club has supported in the past. Um, we just sent uh, three units to Uganda to actually support a, an orphanage that uh, um, Dennis Eznak and his uh, um, his family has uh, um, have uh, um, they've uh, adopted two boys, um, his, his, Dennis's yeah. daughter adopted two boys mm -hmm. from the Greenhouse Orphanage in Kampala, Uganda, and they've sent three units over there and wow. they have them now to bring reliable electricity, reliable power to them, the kids to be able to study at night and read at night. It's oh just such goodness. a, such a huge thing. And, and the generosity of the local, local Rotary Club and, and uh, the individuals within the club to be able to put the dollars forward and help support that work. And that's just the start. Um, from there, what that allows then is, is there's such a um, large amount of resources that are available through Rotary International. Um, and once you can get started, um, there's just such a great partnership that can, can evolve with those local clubs in various parts of the world. Um, and we're, we're working through all of those steps and, and, and like anything, Rotary is a big organization. So you have to do the right things and be in the right places and make sure you're doing the right needs assessments to show, show uh, where these are needed and how you go about funding them. But we were, uh, we were lucky enough to, uh, um, to have an article in Rotary Africa um, just late this last year, um, which we've got some in interest that's come out of that. And uh, there, there's a huge opportunity to partner and work together. And the local club has just been 
extremely generous, extremely supportive. Um, I'm super excited about being part of what an, just an amazing group of people that really want to have a big impact on the local community as well as you know the larger international community mm -hmm. that, that we're all a part of. Okay, uh, so we've talked about a lot of the fun things and the exciting yeah. things and yeah. all that, um, yeah. but you as part of a company now that's beginning and getting bigger yeah. and getting more uh, intricate, if yeah. you will, yeah. what are the challenges that you see now in the near future going yeah, ahead? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a, uh, um, it's a constant, fun, exciting ride, but it's a challenge. It's a challenge every day, mm -hmm. and it, it's like, and many people in in their own businesses have similar challenges, just maybe from a little different perspective. But it's always a resource challenge. It's always, do you have the right people on the team or not? Do you have enough of the right people? Can you afford to have the right people? Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's all. It's always. It's always that balance, and then it's also. Um, a big part of what we're doing is making sure you're meeting the needs of the people that you're looking to serve and work with. You know, the biggest challenges with started, startups many times is that they come up with a great idea, what they believe is a great idea, and then it doesn't fit with who they're trying to sell it to. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have those right attributes, and, mm -hmm. or, or they're just not trying to sell it to the right people. Mm -hmm. And that's always, so that is just that constant challenge of, making sure you're in the right places, doing the right things, and, and using your time and resources as effectively as possible. And that, that honestly won't change. It, it'll change because we'll have more people and we'll have more resources, but we're always gonna have that, especially as we're growing. And, and many, or, like I said, many organizations do. Um, for a startup, it's just a little more acute because you're fresh and you're new and there's new culture and there's new, you're figuring out where your revenue streams are coming from. And all of those pieces just make it that much more acute as you're, as you're an, an infant, as you're, mm -hmm. you're really figuring out how to grow and get your legs underneath you. Okay, and then uh, the next um, question that kind of follows up with that is, what next after this unit, the 42? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple things that are next. And, and in fact, there's, a, there's an evolution of this where we've been able to look at design and, and look at how we can, you know, like I said, with the, it's kind of the next step from the Kickstarter process of now that we have even more of the units out in the field, what are the things we can improve upon? So how right. do we just take this Mm -hmm. and improve upon it because yeah. it, it does fit really into a great niche and there's a there's a great need for it um but then from there how do we build and grow um that product line to either meet larger needs or smaller needs what are new technologies and and new advancements that are that are that are coming out you know we've always we've always said that we're really we've we've kicked off with a solar solution but we're very energy agnostic and we really believe that what we want to be a part of is providing the best energy solutions possible into the places that need it most. And, and that's, that's really that goal. That's kind of that mission that drives us. So you have to constantly be listening. You have to constantly be learning. Um, you can't constantly be changing and, and yep. not execute on what's in front of you. Um, but you have to always have those, those eyes forward. And that's, you know, goes back to your question earlier, the resource challenge of mm -hmm. when you're trying to wear all those hats and do all those things, um, you really have to be, very intentional and very focused to mm -hmm. uh, be able to do those things. All right, and we talked about the Rotary and we know how they have helped you and yeah. fit into, you've helped each other actually. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if anybody's listening and they want to get involved in any way, uh, yeah. is there a way for people to get involved or if they have an idea of how this could be used or, or any, any, what should people do? Sure, um, well, I would say um, similar to the Kickstarter piece, we're right. always open for thoughts and ideas, and and you know the sending the three units to the to the orphanage in Uganda, you know that came out of me being a part of Rotary, yeah. Dennis being a part of it, his family adopting a couple of kids, knowing the needs that are there. I mean that's one example of you know I bet throughout Pier and Fort Pier, mm -hmm. there's people who have connections to parts of the world that don't have access to electricity today that could mm -hmm. use it right now and there's there's contacts and and so we we would love to hear from any and, and all of those people um as far as specifically with rotary though we do have an international project um rural electrification work that that we're building and growing out we've gotten support from across the state and in fact some other rotary clubs outside of the state mm -hmm. on some projects yeah. that we've been doing but we've also really had a had a uh, um intention and a focus on how do we partner with 
other people in the community, other groups, other organizations that we all have similar interests, we all have similar stories um, and, and similar connections to people who have those needs around the world. Um, so anybody who is interested in, in supporting or learning more or being a part of it, um, we have active projects going on, we have future projects that'll be coming, we would love to partner in any way and, and they could certainly reach out to, I know we have a, a Facebook site for the, for the Rotary Club and, and uh, and other ways that uh, that people can reach out, but we you know we'd love any and all support and participation. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. It's been thank so you. interesting hearing about uh, 42 and Peppermint Energy. You've got a lot going on, and we are so glad that you are based with your family here in the Pier and Fort Pier area. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, and uh, we feel blessed to be based here in the the Pier and Fort Pier area and, and are just excited about what's out in front of us and and uh, yeah thank you so much good luck to you in the future thank you all right pier and fort pier are home to a growing number of tech sector businesses some have familiar brick and mortar storefronts while others build their companies online but make no mistake the workforce behind these tech companies is very real and we're glad they're part of our way of life i'm mayor Lori gill Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on City Limits.